Well, welcome to the seven o'clock talk. Hey, I can give her rabbit ears. <laughs> and tonight we're going to talk about catabolic versus anabolic physiology and what that actually means. And so first, let's talk about the definitions of both. Anabolic physiology is a pro-growth type of physiology. So the thing about that is, is growth is good unless it is uncontrolled growth or unchecked growth, which you can start to think about cancers and tumors and all kinds of things that don't or, or aren't beneficial. But your body should wax and wane between growth and destruction. Um, that's actually how you, you uh, grow muscle. So if you, are, if you are lifting weights, when you lift the weights, you actually tear muscle fibers. You actually break them down. And then over the next couple of days, that stimulus causes you to grow muscle. And it replaces with stronger muscle. But when we're dealing with functional medicine patients and we're dealing with chronic illness, how does um, catabolic physiology generally express itself? Because you've seen this and, and, and observed this a lot. You know, when we're talking about like sarcopenia, how does that work in people? What do they see? What do you mean? What do they look like? Well, what do they look like? How do they act like? What do they feel like? You know, what are those things that catabolic physiology, sarcopenia, how's that? Well, I mean, can I give an example? Go right ahead. Well, I mean, a lot of the bariatric patients look uh, like this. So, so all they want to do is their greatest wish in the world is to be skinny. But, you know, they have whatever surgery or weight loss procedure they have. And then they end up with diarrhea, short gut, they are, they're flabby, they're weak, they feel bad, they have no energy, their hair falls out, their skin is saggy, they have no muscle tone, they are just a fat, skinny person, and they absolutely feel miserable. So, so that's actually the definition of sarcopenia. And so if you see somebody who looks healthy and looks skinny, but yet... Um, Oh, what do they call them? Bingo wings. They have the bingo wings. They have, you know, things that they look like they're melting. Yes, that actually that's that's uh, golly, what was that movie that said you look like a melted ice cream cone? That's when the body doesn't receive enough nutrition or input. Well, having said that, a lot of times you're unable to digest or um, get all the B vitamins that you need so you actually have brain swelling which leads to dementia so you well yeah you what is it the swelling of the swelling of the brain or is it the, yeah it's swelling of the brain and so that one singer has that from well that's from alcohol, alcohol use induced. but but it can be the same for people that are wasting because they don't get the nutrition that they need so for whatever reason so if you're not eating enough good food and you're not exercising. You're not giving the body the input that it that it's going to have a challenge. Then what happens to you is is the body starts to waste away, and muscle tissue to the body is very expensive tissue. It requires a lot of maintenance. It requires a lot of amino acids. It requires a lot of activity to keep that up, and so you have to have that. So you have to go through stages of anabolic versus catabolic physiology. And it, to think about that is to think about, you know, when you go work out, you do high intensity interval training or something like that. The next day, you're generally really sore. And so the catabolic procedure is the high intensity interval training. So the CrossFit, the big run, the sprints, whatever it is you choose to do, that breaks that muscle down. And then over the next two to three days, you actually build that muscle back up with stronger tissue. And that's why in the studies, now, if you want to be a figure model, a fitness athlete, something like that, you're talking about a level of 
of activity that's way up here. Um, and if you look at our, our practice is not about aesthetics. Our practice is about health and wellness. And if you look at the blue zones, those people don't have activity levels way up here. You know, they're kind of the people who park at the far end of the parking lot so they get more steps in. They're the people who walk a little more or walk uphill because that's what they need to do. But it's not about going to the gym and eating low fat, blah, 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 <laughs> however they want to eat to change the way that they look. It's about doing what the body needs to maintain itself. And sometimes if we've let ourselves go and we get overweight, like I'm overweight and I've dealt with insulin resistance in the past, it's about using tools like intermittent fasting to help the body resensitize itself to insulin. And so the funny thing is, is if you have insulin, so weightlifters, if you look at those professional weightlifters and bodybuilders and stuff, how many of those guys get heart issues and cardiovascular disease and stuff? Well, lots of them, but then you, there's lots of different things. Like, are they taking steroids? Have they taken steroids? Are they just eating protein powders that just lie in their gut? I mean, there's, there's lots of different things on those guys. And so just because someone looks good does not mean that they are healthy. And that's, that's what all the latest research is. And you do need catabolic physiology because catabolic physiology is what breaks down zombie cells. It's what breaks down cancer cells. It's what breaks down bad things. And so you have to have that. But once again, true health is about a balance of this stuff. It's not about being all one way or all the other because you do need bursts of insulin because insulin helps you create energy and insulin actually is a pro-growth hormone. Insulin pushes the aromatase pathway, which helps produce estrogen, you know, so these types of things that are done in little bits and little pieces uh, in a normal day-to-day -day life is what produces health and wellness. But when you've injured yourself or when you have let yourself go, then there's those bits and pieces where you got to use a, different tools for a little longer to get yourself back into balance. And, and that's kind of what all of this is about, you know. You want to stay out of oxidative stress. You want to stay out of insulin resistance. You want to stay out of pure catabolic and you want to stay out of pure an, uh, anabolic. All of these things need to be done in balance. Um, so when you want to look at exercise, one of the five pillars that we talk about, sleep, nutrition, movement, uh, stress, and community, one of those big items is movement. So, you know, what did the study say? The study say you should do 45 minutes a week in zone two, which is being able to talk at a, at a rate about like that. So if you're really working out, you know, that's what it gets you. You should have a weightlifting session that goes. Well, he, zone two for a lot of people doesn't mean you're going out there hammering the pavement because you can get to zone two just walking fast. Yeah. Well, and that's just it. Zone two is your zone two. Your zone. How, so that's why so that, I say that, it's that, talking in a rhythm like that. So you may do that at first by just walking, but eventually you build up your health and your stamina and your strength, and then it takes more and more and more to get there. Yep, and you get faster. You build what is called base. But that is, like, if you read the books, The Blue Zones, that's what those people do. They leave, they walk everywhere. And they have this huge aerobic base that they can pull from. And so that's one of the things that leads them into this better form of health. You know, and here in America, 
we don't walk anywhere. You know, we want to drive and get the part, the closest parking spot we have. Um, look at how many handicap spots that we have in there. I, if you're mm-hmm. overweight and you, you're on a wheelchair and you're doing this stuff, I'm not taking a shot at you. My, my, my want, my wish for you is to work with somebody and figure out what's happening. What is going on in, in your body that needs to be changed to help you out? And I, I hate to say it, there are some fantastic allopathic doctors out there, but most of them don't believe that, you know, I can go from 300 pounds, almost 300 pounds down to 240 and keep it there. They don't believe that I could reverse my diabetes. They don't, you know, they just want to give you a pill and send you on your way. And there are ways around it because long-term pill usage is not the answer. At least I don't believe so. Shouldn't be. And if you start to read the side effects of those things, you know, some people may need them. So far, everybody we've dealt with hasn't. But they put in the work. They do the work. So with that being said, we will call it a night. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Mrs. Indiana Backdoc at gmail.com or Dr. Miller at Integrated Health of Indiana. And have a great night.